Well, hello everyone. Welcome back and it is good to be back. So uh, if you are not familiar, my name is Andy Frisch. This is the Nutrient Health Project podcast. If memory serves, this should be episode number 25 and it is titled The Most Important Thing. Uh, If you are familiar with the podcast, then you are probably noticing that the best half of the podcast is missing right now. Unfortunately, Holly is at work. So that's the bad news, but the good news is that she and I are still going to be doing the one episode a week like we've done, and I'm going to be adding a second podcast um, during the weekdays. So she and I will typically do one on like a Saturday or Sunday, and I'm going to be doing one on Wednesdays or Fridays, just kind of whatever the schedule allows. So uh, those ones that I do by myself, like this one, will be a shorter format, whereas the ones that she and I record together will typically be that longer, like 45 to a minute, or a minute, 45 minutes to an hour long, whereas this one, you know, 10, 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, And I actually have to kind of keep this short because I have a Zoom call in a little under an hour. So I want to get this recorded and posted for you. So um, I think that's all the housekeeping. I apologize for the absence, but... Uh, doesn't really matter. It's the only reason we weren't here was education, reading, learning, growing, uh, and a number of different ways. And I think there are a lot of exciting things coming down the pipeline that we will be sharing with you, uh, content wise on our Instagram, on Facebook, and obviously here on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. So, uh, but let's get into the nitty gritty for today. So again, today, episode number 25 of the nutrient health project podcast, the most important thing. And I'll just, spoiler, I'll get this out of the way. The most important thing uh, is decision making. And I'll explain why and how you can level it up. And I think by the end of this podcast, you will have changed some of your thinking. And I think it will be a very beneficial change. So I was thinking about this earlier before I put the notes together for the podcast. And just like thoughts by themselves are it's almost kind of like bacteria right like you know bacteria is a real thing you know it exists we know thoughts are real and we know they exist but you can't really see them and thoughts can just like a bacteria a bacteria can you know get inside and have good or bad effects on you it's the same thing with thinking and thoughts thoughts can get inside and they're infectious right you can get a bad way of thinking I mean, Lord knows we've seen this right now, you know, it's 2022 as I record this and like we're a pretty divided country on a number of different topics that all comes down to thinking and thoughts and, and someone taking a thought they heard, agreeing with it, um, embracing it and then running with it. Right. But then you can also have a different way of thinking and maybe you were down on yourself, but now you think better of yourself. And now that thought is, is benefiting you. So I wanted to kind of get into thoughts and feelings and decision making. If you bear with me as we get through this, I think by the end of this podcast, uh, some things will start to resonate with you. So let's start this by asking the question, um, what is actually in your control? Okay. So most, most people actually, let's do this. Let's get the obvious things out of the way. What's not in your control? Well, you don't control the weather. You don't control the traffic. You don't control politics. You might be able to vote, but you know, uh, I'm I'm kind of one of those people that are a little jaded on our political system, so I don't even know how much voting really matters. But we don't we don't control weather. We don't control traffic. We don't control politics. You don't control other people. It can be said that pretty much anything outside of your physical self, you have zero control over it. Can we agree on that? Um, you might have influence on others, right? Like those, if you have kids or if you have a significant other or friends or, you know, clientele, whatever it might be, you might have influence, but you, you don't have a direct control over someone. Even if you have a young kid and you're like, you know, just do what I say, it's, you're, you're still exerting influence, not control. You can't physically control them. Uh, and if you do, I'm pretty sure it's child abuse, but Uh, So you don't control anything outside of yourself. You can influence it, but you don't control it. So let's go a little deeper. Uh, Do you control your thoughts? Do you control your feelings? I think these are two things that people don't consider uh, beyond just kind of a surface level. So I like to examine, I would like to examine this and kind of go a little deeper. So 
let's first we'll, we'll talk about thoughts and then we'll talk about feelings and then we'll come back to the decision making and why that's so important okay so your thoughts let me ask the question and I, I may have spoken on some of this in previous podcast episodes you know we're 25 in uh i can't keep track of what i've talked about in 25 episodes so by the time we get to 250 episodes it's going to be a, a, a shit show but where do your thoughts come from so what i mean by that is most people, if I say, do you control your thinking, what would your immediate answer be? Most people are going to say, yes, I, I control my thoughts. But if I ask you, where do they come from? You know, okay, you might not have the answer of like, well, I don't know really where they come from, but I, I control my thinking. And I would say, do you? Do you really? When is the last time you premeditated a thought? When is the last time? So what I mean by that, like premeditate, right? Like you thought of it beforehand. So when was the last time that you you thought of the thought before it came to the forefront of your brain? So does that make sense? Like something, our, our thoughts just kind of like tend to pop up out of the ether and some of them we pay attention to and some of them we don't. And that'll again come back to decision making here later on in the episode. And I think I have done this example in the past, but just to kind of like nail this home, and this gets into kind of the weeds of like free will. Like, do you really have free will? Again, I think free will, when people apply it to thinking, we don't really have free will. But when you take free will and apply it to decision making, you do have free will. But I've definitely done this example in the past. This is not uh, an example I came up with. Excuse me. Uh, it is actually from Sam Harris. He's mentioned this in the past. And I, again, I think I've done this in, in previous episode, but... It's like the movie example. So if you're listening and I ask you, uh, give me the title of a movie. And if you need to pause this for you know a couple minutes and just and think of a movie, but like if you, you know play along if you're in your car or at the gym or just for a walk and you're listening to this, give me a title of a movie. Okay. Uh, again, pause it if you need to. But if you've already gotten your title, you said it out loud. Cool. Now, whatever that movie was, you you didn't really have. Uh, a premeditated thought on that movie, right? So, and if I take that a level deeper and I say, okay, give me a movie that was made in the 2000s, like from 2000 to, to 2009, that might narrow down the selection that your brain gives you. And then you can go a level deeper and say, okay, give me a comedy that was made somewhere from 2000 to 2009. So my point with all of this is, if you answered all three of those, a movie, a movie from 2000 to 2009, and a comedy from 2000 to 2009, you all you were doing was giving your brain a certain criteria to then go into essentially like the database of your brain and find something that fit that criteria, right? So, and you can kind of take this out of the realm of this podcast and say, you know, your level of thinking is going to be equal to the level of questions you ask yourself. So if you ask yourself, like, why, oh, whatever it might be, like, however you, you know, the, the typical kind of deprecating talk that most people have is like, why am I such a failure? Or why can't I lose weight? Or why can't I just get this right? Your brain's going to be like, well, because, and it's going to rattle off a bunch of stuff. But if you just take that and flip it, on, flip it on its head and start asking yourself better questions and start saying like, well, okay. To date, I've had trouble losing weight. What can I do that I'm not doing right now or what can I change that I'm doing right now that would give me better results, right? And it might be like, I don't know. Well, then the next thing would be to like go do some research and find some answers or maybe send us a question to nutrientpodcast.gmail.com like I worked that in. But so the idea here is basically uh, I think we can agree that we don't control our own thoughts and to me, that's it's still it's something that I get super excited about, obviously, but it's it's just it's crazy to me that you don't control your own thoughts, right? So, let's move on to feelings. Uh, do you control your feelings? So this is a little bit of a different example, but if you think about feelings, they're really actually like a, a, a two way street from your body to your brain and and back and forth, right? So for example. Uh, uh, going from your brain to your body. Let's say that you have a memory. And, and again, where did the memory come from? What made you think of the thing? Maybe it's an association. Maybe you were, 
you know, walking through an area of town that you haven't been in for a couple of years, or maybe you went to a, a town that you grew up in and like these memories come flooding back. But for whatever reason, you have a memory and those memories typically will have a feeling, right? Attached with it. Sometimes it's a light feeling. Sometimes it's a strong feeling. Sometimes it's an overwhelming feeling, you know, but good or bad, that memory is likely going to have a feeling with it. Uh, so you know what led to the feeling is the memory, right? That That's kind of clear as day. Uh, but the other direction, going from the body to the brain, sometimes feelings just come up, right? Uh, if you feel off on a certain day, maybe you're just having a bad day or maybe you're having a great day. These, like the, the feelings that aren't necessarily tied to a thought or uh, a memory these can be related to, I mean, a number of different things, but for example, like the physiological state of your body. So what I mean by that is just like what's going on internally with you. If you are, you know, eating a diet that's not giving you the nutrients you need, if you are not getting adequate sleep, right? If you're really stressed out at work or just in life in general, right? I know some of you guys listening to the podcast, you've kind of told me what's going on in life and like life is stressful right now. I get it. Um, or maybe you're just not feeling very fulfilled in life. All of those situations are going to lead to a potential physiological state inside of your body where you just don't feel the best, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's just like a meh kind of feeling. Maybe it's been going on long enough where you're just like, man, I'm like, I think I might be depressed. And, and you know, that in and of itself can turn into a whole thing. So the that two-way street with feelings again memories and thoughts bringing up a feeling tied with them or just like the physiological state or the experiences that you go through on a day those are going to bring feelings up but uh i think it's fair to say that you don't really control your feelings either you you can't control uh you can rewire them so what i mean by that is like if you have a memory come up and you have uh, a feeling of guilt around a memory, right? So like I've been very open about my like drug and alcohol abuse and like even eating disorders and stuff in the past. Those used to have a feeling associated with them of shame and frustration and failure. But I changed the story in my head of, well, what are all the good things that came out of that though? Like I got an obsessive uh ability to learn about nutrition and to like dig into the intricacies and the details of nutrition and learn how to take better care of myself because I wasn't taking very good care of myself right but I, t I changed that story and I changed my perspective on that story and along with that my feeling of those memories the, the feelings that came up with those memories changed so you may not be able to control them what comes up, but you can change them, right? So, uh, and here's an even crazier thing, I think, when it comes to feelings, and I, and I don't know if anybody listening has heard about this, but there's a crazy belief about feelings in that if, so let's say you and I are sitting down and we're talking and you tell me you feel a certain way, and I say, well, why do you feel that way? you're likely going to give me, you know, it might be like, oh, I don't know. And then you'll give me a reason or you might be able to pull up a reason like, you know, in a, in a snap of an instant. But there's a crazy belief about feelings. And I don't know if this is like scientifically validated. I know I, it's something that's been studied, but I don't know if this is like accepted in the literature or if this is just, you know, this is this is what it is now. This is the state of neuros neuroscience and neurochemistry. Uh, but there is a belief that you have the feeling first so that physiological state causes you to feel a little bit down in this example and then a split second after you feel that you come up with a real or sorry a rationalization you come up with a rationalization about why you feel that way right so the feeling actually comes up first and then a split second later you rationalize or you logic your way into why you feel that way does that make sense? So it's like, uh, for example, you're having a bad day and you notice, man, I feel kind of off today. Why do I feel off? Again, your brain's going to give you an answer. So you're like, you know, Phyllis at work is just a jerk. I'm just, I'm just tired of Phyllis. And 
like the truth of the matter is like you actually felt bad long before you even thought of Phyllis. It was just you asked your brain, why do I feel this? Even if it's like a, a subconscious split second of a thought, why do I feel this? And your brain was like, oh, Phyllis, you know, just like Phyllis can. Yeah. So anyways, you get the idea. Poor Phyllis. Uh, I don't even know anybody named Phyllis, so I don't think I'm going to offend anybody on the podcast with that one. So thoughts and feelings. I think we can agree that we don't control our thoughts and we don't control our feelings. And just that alone hopefully has shifted some thinking in the, the, you know, you guys listening to this podcast. Hopefully you are like, shit, I don't control my thoughts. I don't control my feelings. Unfortunately, that does not let you off the hook. All is not lost because just because you don't control your thoughts or your feelings, you do control something. And if you've been paying attention, you know, if I said fill in the blank right now, it would be our decision making. That's what you control. You can control the decisions that you make. Those are always, think of all of the forks in the road that you decide, the the dozens or hundreds or thousands of decisions you make, right? Big decisions, small decisions, stand up, shift in your seat, stay in the same position, right? Uh, Go to the gym or not go to the gym. And every time you take a fork in the road, so let's say, should I go to the gym or not go to the gym? And you decide to go to the gym. Okay, now you're presented with new decisions. Should I do some cardio or should I do some weightlifting? Okay, now it's new decisions. Should I, if I do weightlifting, should I do upper body or lower body, right? Or if you rewind it back and say, go to the gym or not go to the gym, you say, I don't want to go to the gym today. You let yourself off the hook. Now you're faced with more decisions like, you know, well, do I compound it and like eat some bad food and feel sorry for myself and beat myself up because I didn't go to the gym? So you have, again, dozens, hundreds, potentially even thousands. I'm sure there's some data out there on the internet about how many decisions a human being makes on average. But if you think about, again, oh no, I don't control my thoughts or my feelings, oh no, but you do control the decisions that you make. So as long as you're aware of them, that's the the important part. So let's say, uh, well, let me back up. I'm a firm believer that the quality of your life as it is right now is a direct measure of the quality of your decision making, right? I'll say that again. The quality of your life right now where you are, financial status, physical status, mental status, family stress, blah, 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 blah. The quality of your life is a direct measure of the quality of your decision making, So some of those decisions you've made, uh, you might just feel like, I just didn't really have a choice, right? I I had to go adopt five stray animals from the shelter, even though I already have three others at home. Like they just, they need a home. I didn't have a choice. I was like, well, you actually, you did have a choice. You chose to do that. So your decision-making is going to determine the quality of your life. And here's a beautiful part, like, uh, unlike rather, the thinking or the feeling where you don't have much control over it, you can always improve the quality of your decision making, right? So if you're, if you're okay, like, well, yeah, but how, how do I improve the quality of my decision making? There's a number of ways, but simply put by caring enough to get better at it. So that's something I have, I have people, friends and strangers Every day reaching out to me, having me like look at their labs and, and send feedback. Uh, I made a post yesterday about how I saved a, a client, you know, over $3,000 on medications and, and supplements that a doctor was trying to sell her way overpriced stuff. Um, it's, that's beside the point. But like if you, you have to care enough to do the work at getting better, right? Because if you don't care and you just think, well, I'm just a victim to all of this stuff then or or you have a fixed mindset of it then why would you ever try to get better at your decision making so if you do that first step of saying okay i don't control my thoughts or my feelings i do control my decision making that means you then have to kind of accept the responsibility for like all right so i've made some shitty decisions in the past and again hello two decades two plus decades of shitty decisions my 20s and 30s like pretty much like one big chunk of bad decisions have led me to now. So it's okay if you've made shitty decisions in the past, but you'll start to observe those patterns and realize that just because you've made shitty decisions, that does not mean you're a shitty human being. 
that's something that I think a lot of people, and I, I, I can almost hear some of you listening that I know listen to the podcast, I can almost hear you saying, yeah, right, like, oh, okay, sure thing, or like you're you're just, it's like almost being addicted to beating yourself up over this stuff. But again, I'm going to emphasize that if you've made poor decisions, bad decisions, you know, dare I say stupid decisions in the past, that doesn't make you a, a poor or bad or stupid human being. It just means that your ability to make decisions, your level, the quality and the level of your discernment was not optimal, right? Simply put, maybe maybe you have good decision making, but maybe you were like, way sleep deprived on a certain day like sleep deprivation will impact your decision making right or again like poor nutrition and you're just you're inflamed and you're depressed that will impact your decision making but if you can accept that decision making is in your control and that the level of your decision making is no reflection on you as a person as an entity in the universe it's only a reflection on your quality of life then you can start to care about getting better at it. And as you care about getting better at it, and once you overcome the loop of beating yourself up over and over, you'll see you've always been able to make better decisions, and you'll realize that making those better decisions by itself will give you the good feelings you've been looking for all along, right? So let me, let me again restate that. Once you overcome the loop of beating yourself up about making bad decisions or just maybe it's just about being uh, a failure and you just, you can't, again, you can't lose the weight or you just, your life just always seems to be so stressed out. You just always seem to be unhappy and like, why do I suck? Why am I a failure? Why is my life like this? Why do I have the worst lot in the universe? Once you get over that and you start to take responsibility for it and you realize again that it's the quality of your decisions and you can improve that quality of your decisions then simply by making better decisions, you will feel better about yourself, right? So before the results from those better decisions even come, let's like for an example, uh, you go out to eat and normally every time you go out to eat, you always get whatever, you know, pizza and, and a Coke. Uh, and, and you just, you hate yourself afterwards. You're like, God, why do I always do that? Or you come home from work and you're hungry and you know you shouldn't eat before bed but you do and maybe you didn't have breakfast so you make an even worse decision and you just eat you know a candy bar before bed and you're just beating yourself up over it again like just simply making that better decision so if you go to the restaurant instead of doing the pizza you know instead of doing the pizza i'm going to do whatever uh chicken breast with with refried beans i don't know i, I had that for breakfast so that's where that's in my head uh, well, in my stomach, but in my head, you know what I mean? But just by simply making that better decision, now you're like, go me. And you can pat yourself on the back because the results from that, you know, healthier choice at the restaurant or healthier choice before bed, the results obviously aren't going to hit right away. But the feeling and the thinking of like, damn, I, I did what Andy was talking about. I made a better decision. That feeling is instantaneous. You're like, fuck yes, like go me, right? Like I made that better decision. So that's an immediate reward you can get once you make a better decision. You immediately feel better. Um, that by itself will then start doing a, a, a positive feedback loop of like, man, the last time I made that better decision, even though it was tough and I really wanted that pizza, I felt so good about myself by not doing the pizza. Um, like once you start doing that, then you start to see like more opportunities to make better decisions. And you're like, oh, I can make a better decision here. And you make a better decision and make a better decision and make a better decision. And as you start to pile up those better decisions, now you could you could say that your decision making your quality of decision making is improving right just by being aware of it and just by wanting to make better decisions but additionally you can also improve your decision making simply by educating yourself this is something where as a coach as a nutrition coach as a trainer as a you know consultant everything that i do it it's very common to see people say like just tell me what to do and I don't mind helping people, but like, I also like, I think it's critical to educate yourself. Maybe you don't have to go to like, okay, I'm going to educate myself in nutrition to the molecular level. Maybe you don't have to go that crazy with it, but maybe you just want to like learn a little bit about 
why is this thing working or why is this thing not working? I'll tell any, like I'll tell Holly, if I give her supplements, I'll tell any client, if I recommend something, I want you to ask me why. If I don't explain why, Holly, two times a day, first thing in the morning and last thing at night, almost always is like given this little, little plastic, you know, scoop with random powders in it. And she asks me why, what am I taking? What is this for? And it's, I nerd out because I get to educate her and she gets to understand why she's taking the certain things or maybe why she didn't get anything for, you know, to help her sleep that night, whatever the thing might be. But educating yourself, education is power, right? Knowledge is power. Experience is power. All of these things are power. And as you gain knowledge, as you gain education, as you gain experience, you can start making better decisions because you have more things like in your favor, in your corner to give you momentum to make that better decision. I hope that makes sense. But, and the education can just be like a general education, something like philosophy, or maybe you're, you know, uh, talking to a buddy earlier today, he started journaling, right? And he was, he was one to give me a hard time when I made the journaling episode. I don't know what episode that is, but if you want to know about journaling, go back. I think it was in the single digits. I did an episode on journaling. Um, these things are ways to empower yourself like generally, but then you can educate yourself specifically too. Like I said, with the nutrition example earlier, right? You want to do a ketogenic diet and you're trying to decide between the, the keto product that's, you know, packaged and processed and says keto friendly on it or between that or the avocado, Right. And you don't really know like, well, they're, they're both keto, but like, why, why should I do the avocado and not the processed package thing? And if you educate yourself on it, you'll know why you should do the avocado and throw the processed package thing, you know, back on the shelf. So, uh, again, to, to kind of start to bring this home and wrap up the episode, as you make better decisions, the results you get and the experiences you have will start to improve alongside those decisions. And it'll be kind of this self um, self replicating positive feedback loop. So hopefully some of the things I said in this episode, uh, shift your line of thinking. Uh, it's, it's, this is the first episode I've done without Holly. God, I think since like episode, if this is episode 25, I think this is the first one I've done without her, uh, since like episode, I want to say like 12 or 13. Somebody fact check me on that. And, I obviously she's my best friend, so I like having her here, period. But it's also uh, better to have her here because then when I'm talking, I know if I said a word that didn't make sense or if I just went off on a tangent and lost my place. So hopefully I stayed on point as best as I could uh, and it, it all made sense. And hopefully something that I've said, you know, shifts like our line of thinking and simultaneously kind of removes some of that blame game that people go through while also opening our eyes to the fact that we always have full accountability for where we are in life in every regard. So it's scary to think that you don't have control over your thoughts. It's scary to think that you don't really have control over your feelings. And it's scary to take full accountability for where you are in life in every aspect, right? It's so easy to be like, well, it's because you know Biden's in office or it's because Trump was in office or it's because the country is divided or it's because inflation or it's because Russia and Ukraine or again, Phyllis at work, right? God, I hope Phyllis doesn't run for office. Uh, but like once you embrace that, you are accountable because of your decision-making then you get over that scariness of like, oh shit, like this is all on me, right? There are no adults in the room of my life. I am the adult in the room. Then it can become an empowering thing. And it's almost like your origin story of like a Marvel, you know, movie or a DC movie. Now, like now you're alive. Now you understand how to change things. Now the only thing is, to, to understand and the hard part is to be consistent with it, right? And to know that you're playing a long game and to know that you didn't get where you are now overnight and you're not trying to, you're not going to get where you're trying to go overnight, but you know that you make better decisions, you get better results, you get better results, you have a better life, right? It's as simple as it is. So 
Hopefully something resonated with you guys. If anything I said in this podcast hit home or helped you shift your thinking or just even made you think a little bit, right? Uh, Please share the podcast. Subscribe to the podcast if you're not already. Review it on Spotify and Apple and all that good stuff. All I ask, all Holly wants, all we want is to grow this thing. So I appreciate everybody who took the time out of their day to listen to this. Again, let me know if it's resonating with you. Um, send any questions, like I said earlier, Nutrient Podcast, all one word, Nutrient Podcast at gmail.com. And we will be doing another episode. It is Friday, uh, God, November 11th. As I record this, 2022, Holly and I will be doing uh, a joint episode in two days. So look out for that on either Sunday or Monday when it gets released. Otherwise, follow us on socials. Andy Frisch, Holly Frisch, Nutrient Health and Fitness. I think it's Nutrient Official. Uh, and I will leave you with that, guys. It's good to be back. Uh, I was burning to record this episode, and I hope some of it resonates, and I hope some of it hits, and some of it helps you have a better day and maybe a better week, better month, better year, fuck, better decade. Who knows? So with that, uh, I will leave you to it. Thank you again for listening. Have a phenomenal day. Have a phenomenal weekend. Have a phenomenal... You get it. So uh, I will talk to you guys on the next episode. Later. Love you all. Bye.